Hello, young readers, and welcome to Storytime with me, your little darling narrator. I hope you enjoy this channel and that your imagination gets a good workout through the stories read here. Now, if you really enjoy this channel, then I'm inviting you to subscribe to this channel. And if you want to know the moment we post a new story, then go ahead and select the bell. If you like a story that's being read to you, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to smash that like button. Let me know you like a story. That lets me know to keep doing what I'm doing so you can get more stories like it, okay? Now, if you're ready, go ahead, sit back, relax, and we'll get started. The name of this story is called The Truth Pops Out by Mark Brown. Buster climbed up into the treehouse. Bet you can't guess where I just was, he said. Uh, let's see, said Arthur, smiling. The bowling alley? Nope, Buster replied. The skating rink, teased Francine. Buster shook his head. Okay, we give up, Binky said. Buster passed around his souvenirs. I was at the zoo, said Buster. Look at this. It says here that they've run out of room for the baby animals, said Arthur. And they can't afford a new nursery, said Muffy. Those poor babies, said Francine. I was thinking maybe we could help, said Buster. Yeah, sure, snorted Binky. I used up my whole month's allowance on the new Martian muscle action figure. Our allowances wouldn't be sufficient anyway, said the brain. Perhaps we could think of another way to raise money. How? asked Binky. A fundraiser, cried Muffy. We could have a garage sale, Francine suggested. I can make signs with adorable baby animals on them, said Prunella. I'll ask Daddy to call the newspaper about a free ad, said Muffy. He knows the publisher. I'll ask if we can have the sale at my house, said Arthur. This is going to be great. On the day of the sale, everyone came with boxes and bags full of stuff to sell. I brought over all of my old baby toys, said Francine. I sure don't play with these anymore. Yeah, right, said Binky. Only babies play with baby toys. While everyone was busy, Binky picked up Francine's Jack in the Box. Gee, he said softly, this is just like the one I used to have. When he was sure that no one was looking, he took it behind a tree and turned the handle. Ha ha ha, laughed Binky when the puppet jumped out. Binky turned the handle again. This time, the puppet popped completely out of the box. Oh no! I broke it, said Binky. He jammed the puppet back inside the box and shut the lid. Binky looked around for a good hiding place. First, he hid the jack-in-the-box inside a toaster oven. But someone took it out. Then he hid it under a pile of clothes but somebody bought the clothes. Nobody will find it behind this beat up old lawnmower, said Binky. A short while later, Binky saw the lawnmower being rolled away. 
suddenly he heard the Jack in the Box music. Stop! shouted Binky. But it was too late. The puppet flew right out of the box. Uh oh, DW said. He broke it. The little boy started to cry. Binky turned bright red. No, he didn't. It was me. I was playing with it before, and I broke it. It's not your fault. Honest. Here, I'll trade you, offered Binky. He handed the boy a fire engine. This was one of my favorites. <laughs> What's going on? asked Francine. Binky hung his head and held out the broken toy. Uh, I sort of broke it, Francine, said Binky. Oh, it's not broken, said Francine. The puppet just attaches to this little hook down here. Look, it's fixed. Hey, can I see that? Asked the author. I love Jack in the Boxes. The mechanism is really quite fascinating, said the brain. Just then, D.W. ran up, holding out a dollar. Somebody wants to buy that toy for someone special, said D.W., all out of breath. Oh, said Francine, looking at Binky. Binky nodded and sadly handed it over. The garage sale raised lots of money for the zoo. I think we sold almost everything, Francine said. Except for my super science comics, said the brain. I'm exhausted, said Muffy. Think of all those happy animals at the zoo, Buster said. When everyone was going home, Binky saw his mom waiting for him. Surprise, sweetheart, she said, handing him the jack in the box. It reminded me of you always full of surprises. Thanks, said Binky, giving his mom a great big hug. Well, that ends our story. And yet again, we knocked this one out of the park. This had a great, great lesson in it, okay? Yes, there's an obvious lesson. And the obvious lesson is you should tell the truth. You don't want to have to, you know, lie because once you lie, a lie can't stand by itself. It always needs help, more lies to help the lie. So while you're having to nurture a lie with more lies, a truth stands all by itself. It needs no help. Once you tell the truth, you don't have to remember the truth. It's the truth. And that's and it needs nothing. No extra work, nothing. A lie takes a lot of work. And you don't need it. You just don't need it. But that's the obvious lesson. Here is the lesson that was really great, I think. The lesson where the kids saw that there was a problem. And the problem was that there, were, there was no more room at the zoo for any more baby animals. And they saw that as a problem. They thought, well, what can we do? And that's always a great question. What can you do? And they thought about it and decided that they could raise money. And they could do it by what? Having a yard sale, selling some old things. And for them, old things were their baby toys. And that's what they were able to do. And they were able to be successful with it. And everybody felt good. So we had an obvious lesson and a lesson that wasn't quite as obvious. But again, we had a great story. It was knocked out of the park. So until next time, my young readers, I am your little darling narrator out.